Welcome to another episode of the Office Altering Higher and Power with Molly McGrath podcast. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. If you're a first time listener, hopefully you'll become a long time listener. As always, I'm your show host, Molly McGrath, founder of Hiring and Empowering Solutions and creator of this revolutionary podcast. You can check us out at hiringandempowering.com. Okay, listeners, I am so excited. So excited for today's rock star episode featuring Modern Law out of Arizona, locations in Gilbert, Mesa, Peoria, Tucson, Phoenix, Scottsdale. Oh my goodness, Billy, you have the entire state covered. You have one in Sedona? No, not quite the whole state. Not quite. (laughs) Yeah, I am really excited to have attorney Billy Tarasio here and Modern Law, Divorce and Family Law Firm. The first time I saw your name come across my desk and Google search your law firm, I was blown away by to the letter, to the T, the branding, how everything is completely polished. Get in a Zoom room with your team members. Everybody's wearing their t-shirts, modern law, watching you on social media and all the amazing work that you're doing. I would love for you to just share with our listeners. Everybody's so excited about hearing, you know, the rags to riches story, if you will, where you started and where you're at and what you, just your journey. Tell us a little bit about your practice when you hung your shingle and kind of how you got where you are today. It's a, it's a great question. Thank you so much for having me on. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, Uh, Yeah, I mean, it has been quite a journey. So Modern Law is 13 years old. Um, So we're adolescents. And, um, you know, it's how did we get here? By a constant series of experiments and constant improvement. Project after project, you know, quarter after quarter, rock after rock, just never feeling satisfied always knowing we had so far to go and still feeling like that still feeling like we have so far to go like we have so much that we could do um we don't feel like we're (laughs) at all done no quarter after quarter rock after rock I love that. Like if I, you know, any of our listeners, I'll have all the links in the show notes, your podcasts, your resources, your social links. You must absolutely follow that. And a lot of things that you're doing in the community, which we'll talk about here in a minute, but quarter after quarter, rock after rock. Okay. Well, is would you would you say that you're a risk taker? Yeah, I have a very high risk tolerance, definitely. Yes. So you hang your shingle and you're, you have your, it's you and your goldfish, if you will, starting out and like, at what point were you like, I'm going to feel the fear and do it anyways and start getting visible, start getting digital and just get out there to grow this thing from one client to, you know, multiple offices across Arizona. I mean, it was so for me, I have always loved the business of law and been an entrepreneur. It it was not like a decision. It's just part of who I am. So when, when I opened in Arizona 13 years ago, I did not yet have a law license in Arizona. I had moved from Oregon where I was licensed in Oregon and reciprocity had just opened up and I already had a business plan for a low cost, limited scope legal service model that would be completely pay as you go, 100% cloud software was only just available to law firms and i was going to do law differently and i look a whole lot more like a traditional law firm now than i did when i started 13 years ago because of so many mistakes and so many failed you know failed experiments um not everything about the traditional law model is backwards it got here for a reason so we definitely have blended all of the modern technology improvements, client service with a lot of kind of tried and true law firm business model principles. I 
I would not say that you're you look like a traditional law firm at all. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your business model and why you feel it's unique. Number one in your area, but specifically in the family law area of law. Well, the reason that I would say um, traditional is our pricing model is hourly. And for many years, I was convinced that um, flat fees were simply the more progressive, better uh, pricing model. And you could make more money and it would encourage efficiency. And I was like a diehard believer. And that was just wrong. And that was kind of before I knew that conviction doesn't serve us as attorneys or business owners, curiosity does. And so just throwing out the idea that like, you know, something is true. We know nothing is true. We know nothing. We know that we have a hunch, we have an idea. And then we know as we evolve, you know, how to set up a really good experiment and learn from whatever the outcome is. So we, our pricing is a traditional pricing model where you deposit money into a trust account and we bill against that and we bill you twice a month. And so that is not an area where I would say we are radical or modern, but we do use technology in every possible way to um, become efficient, to better communicate with our clients, to automate communication, that sort of thing. Yeah. And you keep using, I love that you're using this word experiment. Mm. And I think it takes all, allows for the deep landing breath that a lot of times as entrepreneurs, small business owners, you know, by and large, we're not big firm, what have you, that when we're spending a dollar, especially with attorneys, they're like, I need a guarantee. I need certainty when it comes to marketing, when it comes to investing in people, when it comes to investing in just your branding is so polished and um, approachable and hip. You know, for listeners, I'm I'm telling you, go to the web, even the website. You see, you're all dressed in black, and you're looking like you're going to conquer the world for your clients. And you're looking at this and saying, you know, deep curiosity, experimenting. And I feel like a lot of times as entrepreneurs, especially attorneys and business owners, we want that guarantee, we want that certainty. So, for our listeners, how would you maybe invite them? to or share what you do to kind of gamify it and hack it when you're spending money and investing in your business to not be holding your breath and white knuckling and trying to control the outcome. I do think it comes down to to having understanding your own risk tolerance. So when I go into an experiment, I largely know how much I might lose and that's okay. You know, before before I do it, I'm okay with the fact that this may not work. And I can't tell you how many experiments have not worked. A lot, a lot. But the ones that have, the progress that we've made has been so much faster because I was willing to lose again and again. And you've empowered your team. I remember our first time I hopped in a Zoom room, second time I hopped in a Zoom room with you and your team's there, and I'm asking questions. You're like, guys, answer. Tell the truth. Like, you know, what's working? What's not working? Where do you need help? Where do you think your next right move is to leverage, to optimize, what have you? And that was so refreshing to see your team. Not what, every person came up there clear, concise, had it in their bones, their role and the goals. How did you build, how'd you find a team like that? And how'd you build it? Was it intentional? So this has been the hardest part. Yes. I mean, I feel like if I look back on the 13 years, I feel like there's been near constant turnover. And I don't know if that's normal or not. It probably is for a firm that grows at the pace that we do, we grow at least 20% a year. And that's very jarring for a lot of people. Um, and 
I am not a great at hiring. <laughs> I know this. So I tend to hire people who are, you know, a little bit more like me. And especially where we're at right now, that's not how we need. We need people. We just don't. So how did I build my current team? Um, I promoted from within. Every single person on my leadership team grew from within the company. And I did try to hire outside the company for leadership for hr and it it I've, I've tried it twice and it was it was just a bust so for me um growing people has worked really well i love that model same i hear that all the time people will go and hire without myself included i just let go of my fractional coo after six months and it's the second time i've been around that block and I, so often they're like, it doesn't work. So they slam the book on it. And I love hiring within and growing your people up and investing them so they could grow each other up and empower each other up. And I always tell people when I hire them, your job is to hire your replacement. So make sure you anchor in the system, the process, the way you're going to get onboarded and trained, especially your first couple hires, Ink can be pretty, not necessarily systematized. However, if you really pause and put some intentionality in it, because you're training the next person, you're training the next you, you're hiring the next you. So find the way that you want to do it that's really leveraged and automated and systematized so it's easier on you because we are on a path of growth and controlled growth. Like you said, it's jarring. I love that term that you said. It is for people. I'll hear that from employees all the time. We're growing too fast. Like, well, then you're on the wrong bus. You know, there's one thing of growing and growing and growing for the sake of growth. But what I love about your practice and what I've witnessed thus far, it's intentional and controlled growth. It's not growth for the sake of, you know, the stereotypical attorney that they're just money, all about money, 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 money. And I think that's what you model so well is that your team's on board, that your lead team's on board, they're part of that communication, right? Yeah, we, everybody's clear on what we're building. Um, and it's, a, it's an ambitious goal and, but it's working and it's and we're doing it the right way and having other people on a leadership team now this is the first year that i've had such a highly functional leadership team it was really important along the way it was it was easy to pick up toxic people and keep them mm. if they were competent and i had i think most firms do you have toxic people on your team <laughs> who are competent and who know a lot and who have a lot of institutional knowledge, um, they're poisoning your ability to grow. They're poisoning your ability to get where you want to go and have high, have a highly functioning leadership team that works together. Like there's no conflict now. Everybody supports each other, but that took moving some key people out. Which is really scary, especially in this market. And I always tell people when I'll find resumes, I'm like, oh my gosh, I just interviewed this person. They're extraordinary. Their emotional intelligence, their mindset, their ability. It's like they're finishing my sentence or I know this would be a great fit for your firm. And when you send them like, no, I don't, they don't have this skill set, knowledge, years of experience, 10 years of family law experience. I don't want to train anyone. I'm like, oh, okay. It's not the human doing stuff. It's the human being stuff that destroys culture and destroys your business. Absolutely true. When you say everyone knows where you're going and you're up to some big plans and they know what, what would you say is next for you and your firm? What, what would you, what, what does growth look like for you just from what it, from not necessarily money, but from a place of impact and visibility and how many families you can reach and help? Yeah. So our, um, mission is to help as many Arizona families as we can. And because of that, we offer a lot of different services. We have, I, Arizona allows legal paraprofessionals to practice law. And I just recently lost a lawyer who didn't want to be a part of that. 
And um, I have legal paraprofessionals and I want every single one of my employees who qualifies to become one, who wants to be one, to be one. And I want to support them in that for so many reasons. First of all, great. it's great for them. It's great for them. Second, it's great for me. I have more practitioners. Law firms make money when lawyers or practitioners provide legal services. So having that and not having to hire a lawyer is fantastic. Fantastic. And then I can offer lower cost services to more families. So you get to increase access to justice, you get to increase profit, and you get to grow people. So all day, every day, I'm going to invest in that. Wow, I didn't realize it. Say more about that. Legal paraprofessionals? Yeah. So in 2020, Arizona became, it, it deregulated yeah. big time, big time. Not not only are we now allowed to fee split. So for instance, I've just hired non-attorney salespeople that was commissioned only. Now, no other state can do that because you're not allowed to fee split. But I can hire salespeople and fee split all day long because it's allowed in Arizona. Um, the other thing that they allowed was the certification to practice law of legal paraprofessionals. They have to meet certain education or experience requirements. They have to take a test. They have to go through character and fitness, and then they become part of the bar. Do you think with that, you hopping on it, because I have a lot of Arizona attorneys, what have you, that um, are not on board with this. And can you do you think this attributed to your growth since 2020? Um, we're, we're a firm that was going to grow regardless. It doesn't matter of that, that you it declare just, that, but, but it just is like, it just is like year after year, season after season, no matter what we, f we figure out how to grow. Um, but I love that we're doing it with legal paraprofessionals. I love that paralegals within my firm have been able to become licensed. Um, it's so exciting to watch them grow. Um, oh. yeah, it's really great. It's really uh, great. And lawyers have a lot of egos and lawyers can be big pains. And so having a healthy balance of practitioners that are lawyers and non-lawyers, I'm all about it. I think it's, it's just great. Oh, um, wow. Tell us about when you talk about serving all income levels, what have you. I'm really intrigued and I want our listeners to hear because a lot of times people are like, I really want to give back. I want to be involved in community outreach. I want to be visible in the community versus paid traffic or uh, referral source to what have you. Tell us about your pro bono days. Sure. So before we talk about pro bono day, I I want to just take one step back on that. So yeah, and make sure that my computer's being quiet. So um <laughs> we don't hear anything. Great. Okay. So uh, I've had a sister company to Modern Law since 2013. So about 3 years after we opened, that is a certified legal document prep company and th that allows us to offer um doc prep services to people who cannot afford the law firm. I also have a online course with another Arizona lawyer called Win Without Law School, which is a online platform for people who are representing themselves to get courses and coaching. So that's another way that we can kind of increase access to justice while also promoting the firm. So so having these lower cost options has not taken away from the law firm. If anything, it has fed the law firm. So what I figured out really early on, I told you I wanted to open this low cost model pay as you go, and it didn't work, but I needed to figure out a way to um, justify in my own mind how to charge you know, normal attorney rates when my mission was to help people. And that was by doing it differently, increasing. You cannot keep lawyers doesn't work. It doesn't work. You're not going to get the quality. You're not. You're going to have massive turnover. You're not going to be able to pay them well. And as an employer, you want to be able to pay people really well. So having these other um, offerings has allowed us to still have that access to justice movement um, and still make money, but serve people in a different way. Now, pro bono day. It's funny. Pro bono day came from an experiment. We opened a retail location in a mall. 
So yeah, the malls after COVID were offering short-term pop-up leases. So usually when you enter into a commercial lease, you need to, it's a five-year lease. It's a huge commitment. And so we went to an upscale mall and we opened a pop-up location. Um, this was this was essentially like a $50,000 um, experiment and it didn't work. We did not get clients from this location. But one of the things that we offered that we came up with was this pro bono day concept. And that was massively successful. So pro bono day started as part of this retail experiment. And, you know, there were balloons and there were giveaways and we had a line out the door, like so many people and eight clients signed up in our first pro bono day. So now we do pro bono day every other month. We do it in multiple locations and we, we, about 60 or so people come and we get roughly 40 online reviews every time we do it. So you're in a pop-up mall. Again, you are using this word experiment. This was a big one. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, 50 grand and I just love it, but you're not saying it was a was it a mess of failure and I, like what the way this all played out no this was your testing ground that got you r&d that got you to where you are right now i'm so walk me through this just quickly you're in the mall nobody shows up crickets whatever how like you have this aha moment you have this like think tank million dollar you know, in the garage moment where you just think of it. And how did you pivot and get people to their social media? How did people find out about this? Well, um, yes, social media, social media, nonprofits, you know, pro bono day, all it is is free consultations. I mean, it's just nothing special about it. It's just, we call it pro bono day. We have an event. We make it super fun for the kids. We give away stuff. The energy is really great. It's like everybody's excited to be there. That's all it is. And it's, it's, it's one of the most successful marketing things I've ever tried because every single, we do it every other month and there's flyers that get passed around. People talk about it on the community groups. Like it's an exciting, wonderful thing that people look forward to. And it's it's been hugely successful for us in terms of clients, reviews, publicity, relations in the community. And it's really pretty low cost. So what does it look like? Is it are you speaking? Are you treating it like a workshop, a lunch and learn kind of model? No. People register in advance and then they come and they wait in the lobby and everybody gets to meet with a lawyer and you get a half an hour with a lawyer. So all of the lawyers come and there's probably six or eight lawyers per location. And then the lobby's full of people and they're chatting with one another and their children are playing in a designated kid area. And then they get to walk in, they meet with a lawyer. After they meet with the lawyer, we walk them out. They spin the wheel for a prize. They get asked to leave a review. They leave a review and they either hire or they go on their merry way and they had a great experience. Are these all lawyers? These are not all lawyers you're employing. They are. They're all my lawyers. They're all your lawyers. Wow. And are they the legal paraprofessionals? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I love that you call them lawyers. I love it. I mean, they're, they, they're, they're giving legal advice. I mean, they're not attorneys, but they are. They can do consultations. They can give legal advice. They can go to court. They're not lawyers. They're LPs. So I've started using the word practitioner instead of attorneys, but it's still such a, I still say lawyers. <laughs> I love the term practitioner referring to him too, because especially with pro bono and especially pro bono day and what you do, it's like counselor, like we're here. We got your back. We we're holding the puke bucket. Give us all your story. Tell us everything that's waking, that is really niggling at you. Yeah. Wildly successful. What would you give? What would be maybe like just a value bomb you would get? Attorneys are listening. It's like, oh my God, I want to move to Arizona. Like I got to open up shop there. I That's what I'm thinking. But 
virtually the ma- the 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 law firm, the model, the people, everything that you've done is just so intentional. Like you said, rock by rock, quarter by quarter, we're chipping away at this, and we're doing the two millimeter shift. For attorneys that are lis- listening to this and they're afraid to spend money, they're afraid to take a risk. There's no certainty. There's no guarantee. Maybe I'm sitting in a spot where I'm on the tipping point of just like my firm's going to really, I need to take it to the next level. Or maybe I'm sitting, you know, in the depths of despair and no clients, no money, or anywhere in between. What would be some advice you give for people that really like not growing is not an option? Growing growth, grow is happening regardless if this strategy works or that strategy or that person leaves or my associate attorney bails because they don't like it. What I'm hearing from you is you're not a prisoner and you're not a victim and you're not stopping. Yeah, I think that each of us needs to know ourselves and know what we want and what you're building. And I think if you know yourself and you know what you're building, then you should have confidence that it will work. Whatever you're doing will work. If you're building something that is, if you're building a you know, a small practice that makes a certain amount of money. This is so achievable. It's just so achievable. Just have confidence that you you can do it because the truth is that we're in a market with more demand than there are lawyers. People don't realize this. There is far more demand for legal services than there are lawyers to do the work. There are more ways for you to connect with your audience today for free than have ever existed before. It has never been an easier time to be in business ever. So there's no reason to be afraid, but there's pros and cons with whatever you decide. My journey has not been a smooth one. It's a wild ride. It is a wild ride. But I know that it's my journey. There's no other way to do it. Mic drop. Like... (laughs) Truly, if you have belief in yourself, you have conviction, you are committed, you are clear. What I'm hearing from you, you're clear. So often I will see attorneys, and I'll just say this real quick in closing, chasing strategy. There's so much noise out there. They're watching other attorneys and how they're building a family law practice. They're in all these Facebook groups and asking, what are you doing or what are you do? And constantly just chasing strategy, chasing the next you know, million dollar move that they see that their buddy or colleague or so-and-so from the bar association or from the legal organizations. And I always say a confused mind says no. Like when you have way too much noise up there, you know, head trash, and it's just constantly going and you're just chasing strategy. I think that's the biggest thing I see with attorneys when they're on a path of growth of their they're not clear in having that tunnel vision that I'm hearing that you have. Like, this is my way. I'm clear on who I am. I am crystal clear on my vision. And nobody's taking me off that unless quarter by quarter, rock by rock, we decide we're going to pivot this way because we tried something, we experimented. But it's not you as the attorney coming back from a legal conference or a webinar or something you see in a Facebook and throwing a bomb in the room and say we're shifting just because somebody said they made a million dollars or doubled the revenue or 10 exists with this one little magic strategy. Right, right. I think the the thing is stop chasing like easy wins. They don't exist, right? Yeah. They don't. The only way to be successful is work. It is. So you kind of, I think the only way to make this fun is to like the work, right? Enjoy it. That's a great question as you said that. I think a lot of times people, attorneys, humans, they don't enjoy their work. And I think that's a great like parting question to really leave with our listeners. Do Are you really... First of all, do you really believe in what you're doing, what area of law that you're in, but do you really like the work you're doing? 
Yeah. And if you don't, as the owner, understand you have so many options. There's so many, so many things that you can do as the owner. So many options of work to do. You can, you can, you can do marketing, you can do legal services, you can do business development, you can do sales. Um, but you have to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Tell our listeners how they can get a hold of you and follow you. I'm super, super easy to find. Very, very accessible. Yes, um, you are. Very accessible. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on TikTok. TikTok is my new absolute favorite social media platform. I get so much business from TikTok. Um, and yeah, you can find me anywhere. You get a lot of business from TikTok, really? So much. So much. Wow. Are you the attorneys? That's incredible. Good for you. That's incredible. And you have to, have to, have to, listeners, go to mymodernlaw.com. Check out Billy's website. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful. I even love that you ha you're just so intention to detail everywhere from how your team members, you all look so polished and aligned and succinct to, you know, enter here to access for blind people. I mean, the resources, the online help and your social media, my goodness, it is absolutely beautiful. You're just crushing it. Thank you so much. I have a great team. I'm going to pass along to the marketing team those comments because it, it really wasn't me. It was your marketing team. So last mm -hmm. question, do, do you have marketing in-house? I do. I do. So if you have a few more minutes, I can tell you a little yes, bit. Yes, okay. please. All right. So I had used agencies. I was never really sure if they were working, if it was working. I had spent a lot, a lot of years focusing on perfecting intake and sales, which I highly recommend you do if you have enough leads. But then once I kind of once that intake and sales part was really good, I was looking, I was going back and looking at my leads and comparing leads year over year and spend year over year. And my marketing, outside marketing was not increasing my leads. So at that point, we decided to get rid of it. We decided to be done with um, paid leads, done, and focus entirely on content, value building, branding, um, social media connecting. We have a Facebook group and now we do zero paid advertising. And all of it is all of all everything we do surrounds building the brand, being consistent to who we are, providing value. It's why TikTok is so great is because you can really connect with your audience and talk to them. They will ask you questions. You can answer them. And our leads have shot up by really focusing on how do we build value? How do we build a community? So when you say you hire within, was that somebody that was already in your in-house and that you gave them the freedom to grow into marketing? Or did you go out and find somebody that had the experience with marketing and allowed them to build a marketing team around them? I was always in charge of our marketing and like probably a more of a marketing CEO than a than a different type of CEO. So our current marketing manager um, started out in intake and was very interested in marketing. And now she, so she has grown from within and she is our marketing manager and she is responsible for our branding, the consistency. She is like, she has made it incredibly clear that we will not put out content that doesn't meet these guidelines. She's much more disciplined than I am and she's done a great job. <laughs> I love it. So starting at intake, what, mm -hmm. a, I mean, right there, I always say, the voice of the customer, you want to hang on every word they say and translate translate it into your messaging. So I'm sure she is your message. Well, I know I see it. She is your messaging just nailed. Yeah, she really does. She really does. And she was attracted to our brand um, because of a photo of mine from several years ago. And it just spoke to her and she just sort of like she took that photo and that essence and she turned that into our brand. Really? Yeah. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. And so she designed the shirts that you saw many people in. And it's not like we tell people to wear them, but 
as part of their onboarding, they get, you know, we give them shirts and clothes. And now now we have this kind of uniform look. And she found the photographer that did every it's just she's been pretty incredible. And she started um, intake. And started intake. Oh, Billy, thank you so much for your time, for your wisdom, um, for really being a trailblazer and a thought leader in the legal space and absolutely for empowering your team to become legal leaders and giving them empowerment to be part of your creation, rock by rock, quarter by quarter, because I think that's it. And I love that you brought your marketing in-house and you're bringing everything in-house now because it's in the baked in the walls of your business. It's in their bones, in their blood. They're answering the phones or hearing the conversations going through the, from the restroom to their office. They're like, ding, ding, ding. I just heard you talking to someone on the phone. That's my next blog. That's my next marketing message. That's my next TikTok video. Talk about that. I hear a client, this is what they're struggling with. So I love it. You're just, it's just so authentic. And I think it, I know that message is coming through loud and clear throughout your social channels. That's awesome. Thank you so much for having me on your show. It's been so much fun. Yes. All right, listeners, I will have all the goodies in the show notes. You absolutely positively want to check Billy and her firm out. I'm going to have TikTok, Instagram, all Facebook is everything, the website there for you to connect, check out the online help, the resources, everything that you're doing is just incredible. No excuses. No longer making decisions when you have a guarantee and a certainty, attorneys. Experiment and curiosity. That's what I'm taking away from this episode, and I absolutely love it. We've reached the end of yet another episode of the Hire and Empower with Molly McGrath podcast, where dream teams of entrepreneurs in an entrepreneur's world really do come true. Listen, whether you're a business owner, employee, executive, or hiring manager, we fully understand hiring, onboarding, and leadership is expensive, exhausting, often overwhelming, and absolutely time-consuming for the already tax professional. Well, we have your back on all fronts. For 25 years and counting, we have transformed over 4,000 law firm teams into the most efficient, resourceful, and profitable asset of your business. Check out our Smart Hire Solution, our employee leadership program, and the 66-day law firm turnaround at hiringandempowering.com. They were bad.